Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, there is something that has really caught my attention lately, and I have decided to try to dive into this deeper. And it was after an interview I did where the thought was suggested that the brain, or at least who we are, is kind of like a, a, a transmitter. We can both transmit and receive signals. And, uh, and actually what got that started was uh, Brian, a friend of mine that had said, uh, while I was on the interview with his wife, he actually said the comment, he said, we don't have a firewall. And then of course somebody was, uh, that made a comment in there and said, yes, we do, we have the Holy Spirit. Uh, well, there is a firewall if it is done consciously uh, by the Holy Spirit within you to guard against that. <clears throat> but it kind of caused me to want to dig deeper into this subject. Now, as a general rule, uh, we, the, the, the theory would, or the factual information would be is that there is no evidence really that suggests it. If that's what you basically look for, the basic ideas. But uh, then you have, uh, like this article here from New Scientist, Radiohead, the brain has its own FM receiver. And in this article right here, it's an Israeli scientist, Ehud uh, Hassar, uh, of the Wiseman Institute of Science in Rehavot, uh, Israel, that actually suggests that that may not be the case, that we may really have a brain that can transmit and receive signals. Now, the article is, I think, back in 1997, yeah, 19, October 25th, 1997. So it's been uh, nearly, what, about 28 years, 27 years ago that this article came out. And I did do a little research as well since then. And of course, yes, he's definitely gone deeper into the study of this information. And he is constantly evolving new information as a result of that. Uh, there's every kind of thing you can imagine that would be out there. But then, then there's, in search of ancient documents, there's other interesting aspects. Uh, and even I consider the Bible a source of ancient documentation. Um, you know, that kind of hints at these very things. If you look at Proverbs, for example, he said, above all that you guard and keep uh, your heart, for out of it are the issues of life. Um, very fascinating statement right there. Uh, and even the fact where he says, ki mamenu, and that is uh, that which is from uh, literally is uh, is from within yourself. Uh, that uh, that it says on there that let's see for out of it uh, from within yourself goes out life. Chaim. Um, I don't know what to even think of that one. I mean, I, as I'm thinking, looking at this in the Hebrew language right here. It's really, it, it kind of goes deeper than what you could imagine. So put away from you a froward mouth and perverse lips and put far from you. Um, so in other words, one, it shows you that from your heart, there are issues of life that go forth. And also from your mouth, you want to keep the perverse lips far from you because of uh, what you might say. Let your eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before you. So all the avenues of, uh, of uh, sensory projection, which is also, by the way, what they go into in these uh, science studies uh, that they do, including this one here, Scientists demonstrate direct brain-to-brain -brain communication in humans. Uh, they, they, they also go into the sensory pro, uh, projections, much like that, uh, let's say, of a cat. A cat has whiskers. A cat can literally, with their whiskers, they pick up sensations uh, from that. And, and, and there is suggestion by scientists, like in the case of mice and when their whiskers there, that they're constantly oscillating at a 10, I think it's 10 gigahertz, whether they're asleep or awake. 
always picking up things that are going on, the vibrations that are going on around them. So vibrations literally through the air. I remember one time when I was praying for this one lady, I said to her before I prayed for her, and she had uh, a cancer the, uh, in the intestines that the doctors could no longer mitigate, and they sent her home to die. And so I asked her, I said, do you believe that the angels of God are here in the room here with us? And, uh, and she said, what do you mean by that? I said, well, if I can prove to you the presence of the Holy Spirit now, that he's here now, that he's here to want to do something for you, would that help you in believing? And that really got her. And so I, and, I, and the reason I was saying all this, because I had looked over on her bookshelf and there was a radio a stereo radio, the old type, not not like you have on your computer where you're plugged into the internet, but even in that regards, right? I have a Cat5 cable going into mine, but there is a Wi-Fi moving through the room right now. There is an EMF, uh, uh, I think mine's 2.5 gigahertz, but then they have 5G, etc., and they're moving up higher and higher all the time. But there's a transmission of signal coming through this room and this computer has been designed to be able to pick up that transmission so if i were on the wi-fi instead of the cat 5 i don't have to have anything plugged into the internet it picks it up right out of the air just like your telephone your telephone is just like the old walkman radio you walk down the street with a transistor radio you can pick up am fm radio stations and as you dial those stations the voice is still in the room. It's already, and that's what I was showing her. I said, right now, the voices are here. All around you, there are human voices on this earth in this room right now. And she said, well, how do you know that? I said, by your radio. So when I turned on the radio, she realized then, yes, the radio was a device that was scientifically made that could draw out of the air the human voice traveling through the air. Now, the voice wouldn't be there if there hadn't have been a transmission of that voice that was sent through the air. But now we see the two together. We see the transmission, we see the receiving, and we have them both. I said, well, if that be the case, then God is really here as well. Somewhere, even though our eyes can't see him, just like a television in the old days, TV used rabbit ears on top of the television for younger people listening that wouldn't know what that is. It's an antenna. Two little metal rod or aluminum rods that would come out of a, a little box that would be tied to the back of your TV. And what the TV did, those little tubes and everything that were in the back, they were designed to when that, that antenna, when a picture hit the antenna that was traveling through the air, they would grab that signal, that wavelength that we didn't see with our eyes, and convert that image that's in the air to a, to a physical image that you can see right before your eyes. All right, so that's something to think about as well, right? So physical imagery that our eyes cannot perceive, but it's there anyway. So then how does a prophet then know the very thoughts of God or sees a vision, for example? If he sees a vision, if it's truly from God, it's transmitted to him. Is it transmitted from out or from within? Now there is a novel thought in itself. And uh, that's what's interesting as well because everything you have need of is already in you. Maybe the real battle is what's on the outside of you. Maybe that's where the real battle lies. Let's take a look at this, though, from a biblical aspect. We saw what it says here in Proverbs. Above all, that you guard and keep your heart. Okay? Above all, everything, guard your heart. For out of it are the issues of life. Okay? Now... Ephesians says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That's putting on an armor that blocks any interference coming in. 
For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, see, now notice that though. You are battling, what, what part of you, you, you yourself are battling against not flesh and blood, not your neighbor that wants to shoot you or beat you up or whatever the case may be, and I hope that's not the case with any of you, but in other words, even like in Israel, the physical battle, as Paul said, don't be afraid of those that can, or maybe it's Jesus, afraid that those can destroy the flesh, but afterwards it can destroy, you know, they can destroy the flesh, but can't destroy the soul. But fear him who can destroy both body, soul, and spirit, right? So anyway, so he says there, he said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. That word in Greek is archons, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So you're putting on an armor that's going to protect you from th things that are coming into your mind. Because you're also a receiver. You can receive thoughts, imagination, everything you can think of is going to it can it can come into your mind. Wherefore, take into you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to do to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with the truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. So, how do you guard against those? invasions of thoughts and constant bombardments you 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 do it by knowing your loins your loins your whole body where your heart is and everything that needs to be girt about with truth you need to know what the truth really is so that when it comes oh wow i just got that one too so when the thought when the when the enemy comes in to puts a lie there you know what the truth is remember what jesus did when Satan took him in the wilderness and was tempting him. He was fighting not against flesh and blood. He was fighting against the principalities. He was fighting against Satan, uh, which was in the form of an archon, so to speak, or, you know, a fallen angel as he is. And that archon was bombarding his mind. If you be the son of God, take this, these stones and turn them. Or no, he said, if you be the son of God, cast yourself from the pinnacle. He took him up to this high place to throw yourself down. He said, for it's written. Now notice, he said, for it's written. Let's just, let's pull that one up there. Give me one second here. All right. And let me make it larger on the screen for you so you'll be able to see it a little bit better here. Matthew um, 410 specifically, but we want to back up just a little bit here. Let's start. Let's go with the very from the beginning. I'll tell you what, let me go to the main ones here on the screen because it's so much easier to see this that way than it is the, the direction we're headed into. Uh, Matthew 4. Then was Jesus led up in the spirit into the wilderness by, to be tempted of the devil. I, I, I have to say, I, I'm actually very curious um, To know what's written in the uh, Hebrew version of this. So let's blow this up. Oh, went too far. Here we go. Then Jesus was taken by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. He fasted 40 days and nights and afterward was hungry. 
The tempter drew near and said to him, If you are the Son of God, say that these stones should be turned into bread. Jesus answered and said to him, It is written, Not by bread alone, etc. Actually, in the King James we have, Not by bread alone, but by every word. Watch what he says here. I like this one better in this case. By every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You don't live by bread, but we live by that word. Okay? So he goes on to say, Then Satan took him into the holy city, placed him on the highest point in all the temple, and said to him, If you are God, jump down, for it is written, He has commanded his angels in regard to you to keep you in all your ways, etc. And that's true. It's, I think it's written in the book of Psalms. If you dash your foot against the stone, the angels are there to bear thee up. Jesus answered him again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. So Satan took him to an exceedingly high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the earth and all their glory, and said to him, All these things I will give to you if you bear your head to me. Then Jesus answered him, Go, Satan, that is, Satanas, for it is written, I will pray to the Lord and to him only you will serve. Now, that very term I will give you if you bear your head to me. Let me in and take control. That's what he wants. He wants to sit on the throne. Remember, as I mentioned a little while back, Satan said that he would, he would, uh, be exalt, he would exalt himself above God. He would sit in the temple of God and be worshipped as if he were God. And then you read all these passages about that we are the temple of God and then you wonder where he's sitting at. Where he's ruling and reigning from. In millions of cases he is sitting in the temple of God showing that he is God. Doing whatever he wants. Look what has happened in Israel alone. Look what has happened in Ukraine and Russia alone. Both in Ukraine, both East and West, all proclaiming Christianity and killing one another to nearly an oblivion. Tell me who is sitting on the throne. The throne of the minds of the peoples. The only smart ones are the ones that are trying to get out of there. They call them deserters, probably. No, they had a little bit better sense. They didn't have Satan sitting on the throne. And many of them that died, they didn't have Satan sitting on the throne either. They got forced into all of this. Or they believed a lie. So, we go back. <clears throat> You're not fighting against principalities. Excuse me, I mean against flesh and blood. You're fighting against the principalities. You're fighting against the archons, mm. against the powers and against the rulers of darkness, just as Jesus had to deal with that as well. Now, whether or not he could see him or not, I don't know. But nonetheless, it still came from another realm. Wherefore, taking to you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day there. And, and all to do, to, I mean, all you can do Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. And you got to know what the truth is. That's what Jesus does to him. If you look at the way Jesus handles it, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. See, Satan tells him, you know, turn the stones into bread. Well, he could have done it, but he knew what the truth was. You don't have to turn the stones to bread. You need the word of God is what you need. He tells him to cast himself down. <clears throat> and he says to him, again, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. You got to know what the truth is. That's what Paul is talking about. Having your loin, your heart, girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness, knowing to do what is right. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. 
Your mind is a receiver. Your head, your brain is a receiver. And there are fiery darts coming in. And that are those thoughts. That are those, as many people call them today, those are those, um, uh, what do they call those again? That's the uh, intrusive thoughts. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. A helmet goes on your head to guard your brain, right? Hebrews, we have written here. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man shall fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So God is able to know your thoughts. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto his eyes, and him whom he, we have to do. Seeing that we have a, such a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Even when you don't feel good, you're putting off signals from your own being. And those signals are able to reach him. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Where is that throne at? If you are the temple of God, Satan is trying to live in the temple of God, but who really belongs in there? It's whoever you let on that throne. All right? Um, there's one that I want to read to you here in just a little bit. And this is from what Philip wrote himself. We'll go into this in a little bit. Uh, another one. I will, maybe let's see. This is one that's also written in the Egyptian works there. The soul, when it had adorned its self again in its beauty it rejoiced and it sought to find its beloved whom it had hidden in the heart that is so amazing to me you remember how jesus said in that day you will know that i am in the father the father is in me and i am in you and you are in me he didn't say in that day you will seek me and, and, and then I'll get over to you. Now he does say, I will come and abide with you, even in you. That's true. He does say that. But then he makes that very bold statement. He said, in that day, you will know. I am in the Father. The Father is in me. And I am in you and you are in me. What did he mean by that? Philippians says, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So there is a need to guard it. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. He's letting you know that there can be a lot of different thoughts popping up and going on in your head, but he's trying to tell you what to keep. That's why the scripture says, guard your heart. It's not to say the thoughts can't come, but if your mind is full of what's right, it's a lot harder for those other things to come in. In 2 Corinthians, we read this here, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That tells you right now. See? Well, let me back up and read more. But I beseech you that I may not be, that I'm, 
excuse me, that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence. Wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, in other words, we're in a physical body, they acknowledge that, we do not war after the flesh. The flesh is not your problem. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. In other words, not physical. You don't, it's not the gun, the knife, the stick, and everything else to beat up everybody in the park. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. It's, when you can, you know, I'll never forget this. Getting, and I want to just say this. So when you can get control of your thoughts. And the only way to do it is through the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is already within you. You just need to wake up to that. But I had a good friend of mine years ago. His name was Sean. And I don't know if Sean would be listening today, but if he were, Sean, he came to me, and this is, boy, this has been many, many years ago. Gosh, 34 years ago, I guess, would be about the right time. And really, really precious man. He had a genuine heart. And he was watching what was going on overseas in Iraq, and he had served in the Marine Corps. And he really he had a difficult time when he came out. Um, and that was before the Iraq War. Um, and he said to me, he was just, he said, you know, he said, I just want to go back. I want to fight and I want to help deliver those people. And he was telling me all these things. And, and, and when I say this, I say this in very loving kindness about him. As I was listening to him, I said, Brother Sean, I said, no. Because I knew what he was going through in his spiritual battle. He had a battle like you wouldn't believe spiritually. And he was continually telling me about his battles that he was going through. I said, Sean, I said, what's controlling that battle over there is so demonic, you have no idea. You're wanting to go <clears throat> into a fleshly battle and battle and, and shoot people and things like that because you feel like that's what will get the victory. I said, and you can't even get the victory in your mind. You haven't gotten the victory over what Satan is doing in your mind. How are you going to be able to fight and help people that are trapped physically if you can't even get over what the battle is in your own mind? And it really spoke to his heart. He says, wow. He says, Brother Steve, he says, you know what? You're right. But I want to be able to do something. I said, start with you. Start with getting a hold of what's going on inside of you. Arm yourself. The way you arm yourself is taking in what's truth. Jesus Christ said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. And no man can get there but by me. Start there. Not with the law. The law won't save you. Okay? For casting down imaginations. So that means imaginations are coming. And every high thing that what? That exalts itself against the what? Knowledge of God. An imagination can come, and it may be an okay imagination, as long as it doesn't exalt, it doesn't lift itself up into a higher place in you than what God is. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's you. That's bringing your thoughts to where you no longer are willing to think the other way. And, you, and, and I've had people go through this. I know I've been through things like this in my own life. You battle thoughts so bad, you, you, just, you feel like you're just a prisoner. Satan just beats you over the head and beats you and beats you down and beats you down and everything. You know, you have to get a revelation that he is not your master. And until you get a revelation that Christ is within you and that he can, he, he's not going to force himself until you throw the old husband out. Remember how the scripture goes there? 
That's interesting how marriage and divorce is written. It's actually written about you in your relationship to Christ. As long as you are married to another and he's not dead and you're trying to live with your husband, you're living in adultery. And that's a hard one. Hard one for all of us. As long as we are still married, and that people don't want to hear that, you're married to every other thought than that of your love of Jesus Christ. You're living in adultery. Your old husband is still alive. You, you know, that's one time when you can whack him because that's the devil. The devil putting all the he's he's one that's had a control of your life, and you finally whack him and get rid of him. See, not your physical husband, by the way. That's the spiritual issues here. We're talking about spiritual marriage and unity there until that law is dead. By the way, he's talking, that old husband is the law, by the way. Until that husband is dead and you have received Christ. Think about it. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when you when your obedience is fulfilled. But remember, casting down the imagination, every th high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So important. Psalms we read. In Psalm uh, 139, I think it is. Thou, let me make sure, yeah, 139. Thou knowest my downsitting and mine uprising. You understand my thought afar off. Oh, talk about a transmission right there. David said, you understand my thoughts, thought, or in this case here, the word thought, afar off. There's your transmission. You measure my going about and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue. I looked at that just to be sure. Ki ein mila. Not a word. There isn't even a word. Bileshoni. Leshon is your tongue. And he says, on my tongue. There's not even a word on my tongue. It hasn't even got to your tongue. But lo, O oh Lord, you knowest it all together. Yadat kula. Wow. Again, what is that? Your thought is a, is, a, is a transmitter, and he knows it. In Matthew, we read the 12th chapter. A good man out of the treasures of the heart bringeth forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasures brings forth evil things. But I send you that every idle word that men shall speak that shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by the words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. Then certain of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and there shall be no sign given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And uh, I wasn't actually needing in this particular one to go that far. Okay. Let's see. All this is very relevant, but uh, I don't know if I'm going to use it for this here, though. Let me go over here to, again, to Psalm 44. Though thou hast crushed us into a place of jackals and covered us with the shadow of death, if we had forgotten the name of our God or spread forth our hands to a strange God, would not God search this out? For he knoweth the secrets of the heart. He knows the secret of your heart. So when they talk about Scientists demonstrate direct brain-to-brain -brain communication in humans or Radiohead, the brain has its own FM receiver. Boy, and that's so true. My daughter did a painting one time. I won't go into it right now, but boy, 
just me seeing this, it just speaks volumes now to what I understand. I wanted to share with you, though, this was something very interesting in itself. And this was what Philip had written in the Egyptian works. And he said in there, he said, The truth did not come into the world naked, but it came in types and images. The world will not receive truth in any other way. There is a rebirth and an image, and it belongs to rebirth. And it is necessary that they should be born again. Notice that. I love it. He's preaching born again through the image. What, what, and he says, what is the resurrection? It is the uncovering of what is hidden. When you uncover, when you recognize Jesus Christ within you, You've already, as the Bible says, passed from death unto life. Wow, it's amazing. That right there. And as he also wrote in another place, he said, if the man or if the woman ever enters back into her husband, death will cease to be. Do you know he's talking about you and Christ becoming one? You, the wife, the woman, entering back into Christ that's why I say Genesis chapter 2, where the man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and they shall be one flesh. Notice that? They cleave back together. It's a prophecy that Jesus Christ would come and restore us back. Think on those things. Think on these good things here. Get control of what's going on in your life. Get control of what's going on in your mind, in your heart. And recognize what you allow to go out, even in your thought, what you allow to go out before it even hits your mouth, what you allow to go out. Think about it before you say it, my mother used to say. Think hard before you speak. And always try to remember to, to respond with something of kindness, something of love. Think on Jesus Christ. Think on what we can do to help others to recognize Him and help those that are still in bondage to the thoughts that they're fighting. I'm Stephen Bernoulli. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening. And if, you want, uh, if you'd like to, to bless the ministry, we appreciate it. You can donate right there online by clicking there on IsraeliNewsLive.org. And we certainly appreciate you. And thank you for your kindness. Definitely go over to uh, iConnect. Uh, and look for Israeli News Live. You can get this right on our website too, by the way. You can listen to this video there. If you do it on iConnect, you can also donate right there directly on iConnect. There are some people that do that. We appreciate it so much. It's faster, it's quicker, it's easier, uh, and we thank you for it. And then, of course, don't forget about EMP Shield. That's something that this day and age might not be a bad idea. All that's on our website if you want to check it out. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Stephen Benoom with Israeli News Live on our teaching today.